Greetings, greetings, and greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be with you, isn't it? Well, where did the month go? And here we are, end of March, almost end of March, and three months has already gone poof. So it just dawned on me. We are nearing the first quarter of the year, and we just finished just lately finished celebrating New Year's. So this is what life is. Life is passing us by. Life is moving on. And where are we? What are we doing? How present are we to each and every day and everything that we do? Hello, Ty. It's so good to have you here with me. And that brought me to today's discussion. And I'm going to jump right into it because I just, I'm honored and excited to say I just finished uh, our conference for a hypnotherapy conference that was being held in Glendale, California. A amazing. Uh, all practitioners, hypnotherapy practitioners, hypnosis practitioners. I mean, the hotel was filled with a lot of hypnotherapists who were uh, either sitting and talking about our craft or some of us doing inductions on each other. And believe it or not, I myself uh, did a session, a quick session with one of our masters in the field. And I too had my own transformation, aha moment. We, none of us is so perfect that we can't learn one more thing about ourselves or about our craft, about anything that we do in life. And that is why I love going to seminars. I love attending conferences. And I do. I spent a lot of money educating myself, honing my skills, either through going to conferences, reading books, watching videos, watching YouTube channels, watching uh, masters in the work that they do. With that, I had a client yesterday, and this is becoming a trend. It's like when we focus on, th on something, I had a client yesterday that came in, and she's been in the cycle, in a cycle of doing the same thing, and yet the expectations and having resentment or shame because she says, I did this, and I couldn't talk about it. I haven't talked about this all this time because... You're the only person I can express it to because I know there's no judgment here. And for the last 11 years, she's been beating herself up and holding on, suppressing this information inside. Believe it or not, for some people, it would be so insignificant. But for her, because she had high standards and expectations of others, and because she, in her own mind, did something that she would have never done if the circumstances were different. So she's been beating herself up all this time. And by that, let me give you a, something. So let's say we do something that we consider, or by others, that it's taboo. It may not be taboo, but for some people it is. So when it becomes a taboo and we have done it, instead of expressing it, we suppress it. That suppression tends to become like a guilt, a guilty feeling. We hold on to that guilty feeling for long enough. It starts eating at us. It started eating at her and so many of my clients. So here's the cycle. We did something, and by doing so, we feel guilty. When there is a feeling of guilty, we know this everywhere. When someone is found guilty, but before they are, uh, before there's a judgment, what happens? Normally, we hear about it. We start judging that person for their actions according to our perception of what we know. 
right or wrong, it doesn't matter. So we judge that person for their actions and we, found, we find them guilty. Now that person, if they take on that guilty feeling, that guilty feeling be starts eating at them to a point that it starts getting worse and getting worse to a point that they have shame. Feeling shame for the, whatever it is, the action. More shame for the emotion. So now, not only they did something outside of their norm that they used to judge others, now they are judging themselves. Feeling guilty on top of that. Feeling shameful on top of that. And then not expressing or doing something about it, not forgiving them for whatever act it is, it becomes what? A self-punishment. So not only there's this, uh, let's say, a cut, the cut starts creating pus because it's not cleaned out. So we put Band-Aid over Band-Aid another band-aid over band-aid just to cover up cover up that scar cover up that hurt cover up that wound right by putting those band-aids we just suppress it further down it's i've covered it up while that is happening the self punishment we ourselves punishing ourselves far more critically worse than anyone else can do so. So that self-punishment adds more pepper, Tabasco, poison onto that wound. Now, not only there is a wound, but we add more salt or pepper or poison or Tabasco to burn it, to hurt, because we become so critical of our own selves and that whatever action happened. And then we put Band-Aid on top of that. Now it's a bigger pus because now the surface may look good, but now it's going deeper into it. So the root is becoming more poisonous, damaging internally. Now that internally may not necessarily be physical for us to see it, but it's eating into our skin, into our body into and body has neurons and neurons of this receptacles receptacles that truly are small little antennas that feel everything everything we feel our body gets to feel the body itself has a brain of its own that responds to whatever it is that we feel the body before you even think if someone touches you before you even think the body reacts and jerks or loves and appreciates and cuddles, right? So all that is happening. And that is what I talk about, our own guilt. Whenever there is a guilt, we think about it in the court system. It's like when someone is guilty or we think of them as guilty because they're caught, hmm, there's going to be ramifications. What are the ramifications? There's gonna be judge, jury, prosecution, and that person is to be found guilty, right? Oh boy, we do all that. We poison and punish ourselves before anybody else does. So we literally damage ourselves and it's so hard for us to forgive ourselves. And I don't know if you have ever felt that, if you have ever uh, punished yourself or not necessarily punish as punish, but criticize yourself, judge yourself, beat yourself down and think less of yourself for an action, for something you have said, for something you have done that you believe has hurt someone or has been the cause of it. And if so, just share because I want you to know that no matter what happens, sometimes we think the worst of it when the other person has already moved on or there is a way to communicate 
and speak about it and literally talk about this is what I felt, this is what happened, and how can we come to a resolution? How can we come to a better understanding and bring it to surface? You know, until the wound, we don't cut it, we don't open that pus for that pus to burst, the pus to the liquid to come out, nothing. It's so hard to heal. It's so hard to heal because sometimes we hold on to that for the longest time. So that's one aspect of it, that when they come here for hypnotherapy, um, we do part of that hypnosis is to set them into that state of calm and relaxation, into that place of safety within themselves without analyzing, judging, and criticizing, but just discovering just discovering, acknowledging. That's what the evoke is. Evoking so that you can embrace. But before embrace, we have to acknowledge it. Acknowledge what part we had in this, what part we had in holding on to it, what part we had in taking responsibility for it, and what part do we have in making this better, heal, or letting it go. So it's not so much about another person, but about us. Maybe a, a scene, an emotion, or whatever action happened 11 years ago, 15 years ago, 30 years ago, the other person has forgotten all about it. But somewhere, somehow, we hold on to it all these years. And I call it, what's eating at you? So you see, I have a book about weight loss, and it's called Stand Up to Slim Down. And we're putting the modules together for a online uh, a online program that is going to be sold in within the next 60 days. But it's not so much about weight and losing weight and dieting, but it is coming to terms of the emotional baggage that we hold on to, the emotional baggage, the, the titles, the labels, the, the band-aids we place upon ourselves in order to suppress things for good reason. I must say, for good reason. Sometimes we're not ready. We're not ready to open that wound. We're not ready to heal. We're not ready to let go because in a way, not letting go is also we think that as long as I'm holding on to this, mm, there was this punishment to the other person not realizing it's never about another person. We're still holding on to it. It's ours. It's ours. It's our baggage, our wound, and it doesn't matter if someone was the cause of it, the trigger of it, that pushed the button, because we can say a word, let's say, date, like the date we eat. Oh, it could be almond, it could be blue pen, and if we have an emotional negative emotion a blue about a blue pen every time we see a blue pen will affect us not realizing that there are different variations of blue pen and not every blue pen is the cause of that original hurt or pain that was that we suffered through and here's the thing when when that trigger happens, what are we supposed to do? Well, the natural thing would be that we go after something to soothe us, to make us feel good. Maybe put another Band-Aid or even cottons around it, weight around it. For some people, we pick up a cigarette and smoke it because while I'm smoking, I can breathe. I can relax, even though my heart is palpitating, my heart is palpitating harder, uh, my adre adrenaline is 
uh, going faster. Uh, my mind gets off of that. I come concentrate on the cigarette. And as long as I am putting it in my mouth, my oral gratification is uh, suppressed and um, satisfied. So then I don't have to speak it, right? I hold my breath. I hold my mouth. I hold my voice. I hold the words. And as long as I'm holding it, again, I'm holding it because bottom line, when I hold it, that means I'm suppressing it in and that's going to be boiling and becoming more resentful and I'm going to feel more aggravated because now another layer got added while I thought I am relaxing and feeling better. This becomes the negative connotation because it's a, another destructive habit Add it on to another destruction that happened versus when something like that happens or someone pushes our buttons and we think we're going to go into that loop and pick up that cigarette, we do what? We pick up a glass of water. <sighs> Give my mouth water to cleanse calm and clear water washes it down water clears it cleanses it and calms me and i can drink the entire bottle which would be more health beneficial than the cigarette or any other thing that we go after and that's the difference what do we pick or what do we do when we feel stressed, upset, angry, resentful? Instead of hurting ourselves, how about we come up with a pattern, a better pattern that we can use to let go, to release, to relax ourselves? Maybe go swimming, maybe take a walk, Maybe just shift and make a phone call and talk to someone and just release whatever it is that happened. Read a book, takes your mind off of one thing to another. Even if you read a page or two and you say, this is stupid because I didn't remember anything, it doesn't matter because it shifted you from here to here. Make sense? Some people I know, one client loves gardening. Every time she gets upset, you should see her garden. It's gorgeous. She started by putting her hands in the soil and just, just taking dirt out. Yeah, like plowing and working with the dirt. And so she started planting. And then she saw the result, the result of this beautiful garden. And every time she started doing the gardening it gave her more pleasure so it's not only the times that she was upset but to see the result of what a beautiful garden she created that's called evoking embracing and evolving evolving to make the most beautiful garden so visually it's beautiful Physically, it's she's doing something with her hands. She's doing something instead of the negative way into a positive way. And the result, absolute beauty in her garden. The front garden, the back, she's now putting small little mosaics and everything and creating this beautiful potted area for a new set of flowers that she's going to put and she started putting angels all over with a lot of sayings with the rocks and those have she comes to her garden and that garden has become her place of meditation the messages are all motivation you see it's what you make out of it so we truly have the choice of becoming destructive or productive we all do no matter who pushes our button it's up to us peel away labels peel away band-aids peel away the hurt become real with yourself 
and hopefully choose a healthier, better, productive, and loving, loving ways to heal, to heal with it. This weekend, one of the masters, I, I, I was sitting in his workshop and he was teaching something. Uh, it was about biting nails and, you know, cutting and hurting and, and the, the, the things that we do, the pulling hair. And I started talking to him about a client afterwards. And then I said, ah, I used to have this one habit. And I started talking to him. And then we went from, I used to, to now I have it in a different form. Why do I have it? Just doing this timeline all the way to when I was six years old. And then it was like, wow. Literally, I was like, tears flowing down because I thought I had healed within on that one aspect, not realizing that another version of it was still very slightly present. And there was shame involved in it because I was still holding on to it. Bingo. Our internal shame and guilt and hurt <laughs> surpasses anyone else's punishing us. And I am glad I had that 15-minute session because I was so ready. It's like, you know, things do not happen to us. They happen for us. I was at the right time, at the right place, not at the workshop. Yesterday at the close of the session, 15 minutes, standing, talking while we're standing. And because we're both therapists, it was like fast, 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 boom, we're right there. And the readiness of letting it go. Letting it go. So that I could breathe. So that I can say, I healed within. Because it is internal. All emotions are internal. All wounds are internal. As they say, as the saying goes, no one can hurt us. We allow ourselves to be hurt by them or what they say or what they do. So the next time that mom client of mine saw the blue pen or the uh, her trigger, I had already done the work and tapped and she had accepted that her trigger no longer worked. She put it out of order. She eliminated it. She took it from the inside, put it outside, released it. So I hope today's session was beneficial to you. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you for being here. Thank you for always being one of the biggest cheerleaders here. Thank you for being an incredible colleague. I am proud to be a colleague and uh, sit on the board, serve on the board with you. And I must say, I am proud to be in this profession. There is nothing that we cannot help. We cannot help you with, especially me, now that I am here doing this Heal Talk Tuesdays. If you believe there is something that I can help you with, by all means, please contact me, email me, message me. I am right here for you. Transformation begins when we evoke what was, embrace what is, and are ready to evolve to what will be. That's how we heal within, where transformation begins. Why? Because you matter. We all do. This is Lisa Bubari, your expert clinical hypnotherapist. And I look forward to our next week, next session, Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Until then, may the universal light be with you and God bless. Oh. You can always find 
this episode on YouTube. And you can also subscribe for more information and great topics coming your way. Until then.